Ah, guys, welcome back to Higurashi. Ah, now we're going to be on chapter 8. Um, last episode, um, we found out that Tomotake-san had uh, died by the curse. So I wonder what's going to happen now. Sleepy. Whoa, that was really big. Yonkichi Khan. I'm usually awake once it's time to eat, but it doesn't look like I can do it today. I was watching TV until late last night. I'm so tired right now. Was one of those on TV shows you loved so much on last night? Uh, how extremely vile. Don't jump to conclusions. It's so perfectly normal for boys. Nothing to be ashamed about. We could not put it in my head. It only made me feel worse. Could you just let me pass out this lunch break? No, seriously. Why you think I would just sit here and allow that? I'll get really angry if you disturb me. Really angry. Yeah. This was just dreadful. It's just so sleepy. I set my head onto the desk and drifted off into an afternoon nap. It seemed that Satoko responded, but I pretended not to hear. Cut it out, Satoko Chan. Akichika fell asleep. She's sleeping face, so cute. He could take him home later. Let him be for now. Let's move over there. It'd be rude if Kichi if we bothered him now. Uchi Chan is a, really is a good girl. It's not waking up and the teacher comes back. I take that back. <laughs> the excuse that I didn't sleep much last night was because I was watching TV was a lie. I was at bed at the usual time of because it's conversations that we should saw in the afternoon I didn't get much sleep. Just being the day like this, it's almost as if the incident with Tomataki san didn't happen at all. It made me think, was Oishi san just trying to deceive me? But it was probably the truth. One thing was certain, I couldn't speak to anyone about it. He wanted my assistance, but I really didn't know anything about it. If I knew I wasn't going to be any of help, I would probably have listened to it in the first place. It ended up with me again regretting learning something I didn't need to know. If I had ever learned about it, I would, without a doubt, be goofing off with the rest of them right now. If I couldn't have a resent, oh, is she son for this? Huh? When was that? I heard he wasn't there the next day. It appears he vanished at the night of the Hanagashi. You know, I was supposed to keep the other from listening, but I could hear it clearly. I knew that Rina's voice was hard to pick up, but I could still tell that she was quite upset. It couldn't be other talking about Tomotake's son, namely Itake. Not for sure. That's all I know. I would have to hit a foreign, uh, feign ignorance about this topic because I needed to keep it secret. Rather than we couldn't be forced a lot to join the conversation, it was much easier to just sit here and pretend I was asleep to listen in on the discussion. Wait, why did I have to pretend to be asleep while eavesdropping my friend's conversation? The guilt stung. So me and the other, so, uh, me, so me and, wait, it's fuck, shit. Okay, yeah. So, and me, there are others, right? Two. But they don't know if it's in the curse or if it's, this was in Onikakushi. Onikakushi. Onikakushi? To be hidden away from a demon? What a mysterious phrase. I didn't know. I did, have, however, get the feeling it meant nothing good. The other was another, right? Right? If it's Oyoshiro Samos, yeah. But, but this year at all? Grandma Mayor talked about it. Seems they talked to the police about it beforehand. They said they'd take care of whatever happens to shit without causing a commotion. Then, without us knowing that someone had it, either me being AB, next could me, I wonder. Don't worry. He got home safely, but it's not allowed, right? That was a long time ago. Let's stop talking about this. And we soon cooked the movie. Both of them went silent. The entirety of the conversation was still a bit unclear, but a few parts caught my attention. First of all, the term Onikakushi, to be the demon to, to be demoned away by the context it was used in, I would guess it's similar to being spirited away. I suspected that was what it meant because Tomoteka's son and that woman, it really bugged me that I didn't know her name, vanished after the Watanagashi. The next thing could be that stuck out was when Rina said, there's another one, right? I mean, I said, also said if it was Oyoshiro Samashi yeah, responding to something, if it's Oyoshiro or uh, oh yes, she was almost cursed, and there had to be two victims. Is that what she meant? I'll come to think of it. I remember me not saying at the beginning that they didn't know if it was from the curse or if it was from the case of Okunikakushi. It seems like the de curse and being demon away are different things, and they were a phenomena that were paired together. 
I recall the mother of this terrible land. There was this Spinoza elegant as his appearing, and that horrendous hand would have been described as cursed. Then I went out with them, and she, and she vanished because she was demoned away. What I do know is there is more, normally an even number of victims of the curse proper. And the last point that bothered me was Rena. Rena was framed. For what reason, I didn't know. However, she knew that Spin had made her a potential target for his zero summons curse. I recall correctly, Yoshiro Sama, which should be the guardian of DDF and Nwazawa, is in the Garden D supposed to defend the citizens and drive out invaders. I recall correctly, Yoshiro Oishi sense that the original targets were the, were the enemies of the village, but recently there was no longer any distinction between them or regular outsiders. But if that was the case, and I would think that I'd be more likely to target having moved here more recently than Reina. From her composure, I couldn't interfere that she was grimly certain that she would be next. I should probably relay what I heard just now that Oishi saw. Inform me the police of what I heard by eavesdropping on my friends but pretending to be asleep. It made me feel terrible. There is a few questions that left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Would it be better not to seek the answers to those questions? As I continued to learn more and more, I felt like I had fallen past the point of no return. I would definitely regret this one day. I would definitely regret ever having learned of these events. The teacher approaches. Kichi-san, you must awake. And in the distance, I could hear the ring of the handbell signaling the start of afternoon classes. Okay, I couldn't sleep at all. I hastily opened my eyes and raised the, my head up. It was in that moment that I leaned against the back of my sweat. Oh, it was a thumbtack on the back of my chair with tape. Circumstantial evidence was enough. Satoko, guilty without trial. Capital punishment. I first switched from my seat. And I checked as if my feet were tangled up. My shoelaces had been tied together. Not bad, so tough go. While I was sleeping, you were able to conceal your presence, able to pull off this fine piece of work. The teacher came in right as I was able to pull off my shoes and tackle Satoko. Oh, oh, oh. did you not notice that our teacher has a very geeky son? Take your seat. Clump, clump, whisk, whiff. Not caring what bad made her. Eat a flick to the forehead. Wow, geeky son is being mean. Hey, don't pick on the young kids, my bear can't pull out just to her. I saw to go stick out her time, hey, that was a little brat. Go on, my bear can't. Yeah, yeah, I'll apologize. Sorry, Satoko san. In case I apologize, even if it was in completely insincere tone of voice. Then I'll remember this. Kichi chan, ki chan, ki chan, get your revenge at the club meeting. Take your seat, take your seat. I sit down with Demian told me to, so you switch to class representative mode. Okay, school was short today. <laughs> um, you think gonna happen much on the stair at these uh, the construction and the buildings and whatnot. Oh no, we're still in school. Okay, whatever. With the boring classes finished, school is finally over for the day. Now then, what should we do for the our club activity club today? Personally I would like to play that deduction game one more time. I was hardly able to play it last time because of Oishi's son. Rina and I weren't even able to test out our strategy. That's right, today Kichika and I will be victorious. What should we do? We never played the same game two days in a row before. Why not try asking me? Man looked over her shoulder as we made eye contact. She slowly tapped her palm with her fist as her face suddenly lit up. Oops, I completely forgot I need to go help my uncle today. Sorry guys, not today. Helping your uncle? Aren't you a little goody two-shoes? Sorry, really. I really did forget. Well then, sorry guys. The cell man is heading back home now. I mean, I left just with that and rushed up to the exit to snatch up her back. So I'm guessing you can stay up to school when classes are over or whatever. Huh? You see me on me Chan. She sometimes goes to help out her uncle's shop in town. And this, you know, we're an actual club, like, recognized by the school as a real club, so we get to stay after school for club activities. But other than that, why the hell is she leaving? Oh, whatever. Oh, I thought she was the type to get caught for such a bothersome stuff. She said that she gets paid for it. It's quite a bit of spending money from what I hear. I see she was able to pay for that mountain of games with what she said from there. But that, wouldn't you call that a part-time job? Is it against school policy? There's a clause that states family visits are excluded. Is that what she's calling it? So what now? Pass on the club today? So we're done today, I guess. I guess. And why not be fighting with the club president? Let's do this. 
up at the club locker and begin searching for the deduction game from the Everground Apollo games. Oh, uh, here it is. The deduction game from yesterday. Man, I had to stop just as I was getting the hang of it. At the very least, I wanted to replace the token for what she did during the afternoon break. I do not mind, but is that fine for Rina San Rica? Um, if each girl wants to do so badly, I wouldn't mind playing for a bit. Oops, I just hit my mic trying to itch my mustache. <laughs> Anyone together. Mm, when she says it like that. Mm. I wanted to go shopping if there wasn't a club meeting today. Going to buy soy sauce and other things. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot. Well, I guess this has been a while. I should go treasure hunting. Was this now? Everyone was no longer in the mood for club activities. I kept, if I kept on trying to push the matter, I may take them to realize I had trigger up my sleeve. Oh, I'll give up this time. Man, I was really looking forward to playing it. I shuffled through the cards so I was still caught up on it. At the next opportunity, I shall give you a sound thrashing. No ho ho. The murderous Otoko. The murder weapon is the pistol. It was you after all. What did you say? I mean, I'll, then I'll just took a look at the cards on the desk and stuck out three of them at me. The murderer is Kichi in the lounge with the rope. I don't need no rope. <laughs> I'll just strangle you like this. No, Kichi is such a beast. Phew. Well then, I guess it's good that I got out of that, my system. Wow, I remember this Kichi son. She was used as a plaything for quite a while. How unfortunate. Ha <laughs> cute, cute. Everyone got ready to go back home. I was helped gather up the scattered cards. I suddenly paused. They were just suspect cards, but I know something strange. Rina, Satoko, Rika, Kichi, Mion. Satoshi. Satoshi? Not all the cards were made by us. Or at least every card besides that one has the name of a club member. Does that mean this Satoshi fellow is a member? Was there someone in the class named Satoshi? I couldn't find anyone named Satoshi in the class. Rose just stuck up on the wall. Kichika, let's hurry and finish cleaning up. Besides, we must ah, be rushed, but we not finish quickly. Satoko and Vika had already had a married away from the locker, so we were the only ones left in the classroom. Right now, Rina had already gotten her back and was ready to leave. Rina, there must be quite a few people with the transfer from the school, right? I actually asked Queen in a bit of a roundabout way. Rina made a trouble fix it and answered. Yeah. He and himself was a real town, right? So people transfer out every now and then. Then is Satoshi another one of those transferees? Sorry. I don't really know. There was a bit of a pause, but the answer was pretty much immediate. Uh, I'm not saying it to be mean. Just last year, I transferred into somebody I just missed him. So I didn't hear much about him. Sorry. And I'd be moving out of this town, these people. I am not sure, sorry. But so it's like, well, she refused to tell me about the murder at the dam. Maybe it was Satoshi that was murdered, I don't know. Well, I said about her denial and I felt a bit of anger. I'm um, their friend, aren't I? Parents don't keep secrets from their friends, do they? Even though I do appreciate that they kept that unsettling curse name from me. But if anyone's worried about it, I'd rather be worried with them. That's that, that's what it means to be friends, right? For a moment, I wonder just what kind of face I was making, and just you now these mixed feelings of sadness and annoyance. Kichika, you're making a scary face. Why is it? Why? It was probably exactly the kind of face when I said it was. It appeared my grandma's but I frightened her. I oh, was sorry. I was really looking forward to the club today. I'm just feeling down about it. I wrestled in a chair. Let's go home. So I got an awkward move with this. We headed home. Man, you need to be straight up with them tomorrow at school. Just tell them you don't like them hiding shit from me, bruh. Um, I wonder why. Why have I been getting this I'm feeling lately? I didn't know anything. I had nothing to worry about. I was just enjoying my everyday life. My long ostrich shuttle gave no answer to my naive inquiry. Huh, I just got, huh, I just got a friendly quest. Um... Who is Lorraine? Huh. I don't know. Anyway, keep you going any time, maybe? Maybe? We can extremely question the reason behind my mood. I'm sure my expression made the situation even more unsettling. You think so? Yeah. 
You seem to have been a little out ever since this morning. Maybe a cold? Physically, I was pretty sure I was in perfect health. It may not seem like it, but I've had perfect attendance since elementary school. But you know, I could know since I didn't give her an answer. It could be that the fatigue of moving has finally caught up to you. It's completely different from when you used to live after all. Of course, you've got tired since there's so much you need to get used to, remember? Maybe that's it. Yeah, it has to be. You know, it was always like that at first, too. I could tell you now, you know. I wondered if we had also experienced a slight bit of alienation last year that I was feeling right now. Thinking so, I felt that like she was the only one who could understand how I felt. I like to hear about when you first came to Hinamusawa. How was it? I feel like I had been drawn to the conversation her face suddenly brightened. Uh, it was the same as Kichikan. I didn't know the villagers' names at all. Me, China, and the rest were all very kind, so I wasn't lonely, but I still feel a little out of place. You know, I took my other teeth when she had moved here. All of her first acquaintances surprised us, worries, and good times. So, Satoko so got you too? Yeah. There was a little thump that put up my chair. Poke. Then, with that, I, yeah, that really takes me back. When we invited him to the club the first day? Nah, there wasn't a club at the beginning. It was for him partway through. One day, she said we used to stay after and hold a big game tournament. Come to think of it, me on this, she was the first club president. Now I get it. This is a secret, but Michin used to be really bad at the beginning. She'd never win. Huh? Man, really? I can't even imagine that. She had most of the penalties that she came up with. <laughs> Seriously, don't tell me. I can't believe me was like that. So she gradually transformed into a monster who used any means necessary to win during that time. Mian had her best when she's fighting dirty. It began making more friends besides Michin after that. But yeah. It might have been only since you moved here, but that it finally felt like I had gotten used to it here. I guess we had also been looked in the dark by Yoshiro Sama when she just moved here. I guess when they finally told me about Yoshiro Sama, I'd be considered one of them. I wonder when I finally be considered one of them. Huh? Do you say something? No, sorry, just talking to myself. Ah, uh, Gichikun, you're silly. Do you know I was poking in front of me laughing? I couldn't help but laugh as well. But suddenly I stopped. Then after making up my mind, I spoke. Is he going to finally get it? Say, don't hide shit from me. What? Hey, you know, is there something that everybody is keeping from me? Huh? No, not at all. You're lying, aren't you? And I suddenly stopped. Her expression was cold and intense. What do you mean by that, Kichi Khan? Her tone was so the same and cheery and lighthearted as one before. You are, aren't you? Keeping something from me. As I understand what I meant, her expression grew even more intense. Seeing that face, I regret seeing something so rash. But she came back at me in a way I didn't expect. Well then, Kichi Khan, aren't you keeping something from us? Huh? Her tone didn't change, but it was the first time I seen this expression from Rena. Without her gaze pierced through me, I couldn't believe this was the same, Rena. Aren't you? Lies are secrets, aren't you? You are. Secrets. She didn't actually say that part, but she looked as if she did. They said, Tommy took a son how I felt alienated from the group. Even without her having to think about it, there were things I knew I felt guilty about. But I didn't tell her what happened to the time I took a son to be considerate. I was keeping a secret just the same way they didn't tell me about your Shiro Sama. Then, why don't we even? No, I'm not. No lies. No secrets. Liar. Her answer was instant and shook me. Then I stared at the through me, watching me like a hawk. Why would you even say I'm lying? Didn't you say that you were called into the teacher's room yesterday during a club meeting, Gichi Khan? I uh, know you didn't go to the teacher's room. I swallowed hard. It clearly wasn't a bluff. She knew what happened. The teacher said you had a guest, didn't she? But you didn't talk at the entrance. You talked inside of a car near the school gate with some man we don't know. Rena knew everything. She knew that I was called out by her Yushi son and that I heard about Tom. They said that Tom took her son as well. Did she know all of it? Exactly who was that man? I don't know him. Why is someone you don't know have business with you? I don't want to know that myself. Then what did you talk about? It has nothing to do with you guys. It was a lie. Lies. We need to scream and go through the trees. Sitting in front and burst into the air. I couldn't accept the deep breath I had just taken. Now it was like I wasn't allowed to exhale. It was here I first realized. The person in front of me, she wasn't going to read group. Then who was the same before me now? Who was in me never good appearance? I had my breath for so long, I could feel myself suffocating. Right? And then she made a facial expression that Rena normally might have made. It didn't matter what it, that was, Rena, she just smiled and chilled me to the bone. She drew closer to me. I felt her breath against my face. 
it was at least a bit exciting. Who this was with Zeno's face was going to chew my nose right off. I called her as I imagined that. Then she smirked as if she was able to see right through me. We all saw secrets just like how Kichi couldn't have secrets. It was in his usual smile, but her eyes were still like the eye of a hawk's, bringing her face close enough to mine to almost bump into my nose as she kindly persuaded me. Couldn't honor shaking my head. This person sitting in front of me, this person who looked like Rena, frightened me to my core. I was terrified knowing that she could hear the sound of me swallowing nervously. After what I felt like an eternity, after a long empty silence, she finally spoke. Let's go. It's getting chilly. It was Rena again. Smiling at me once more, she started walking as if nothing had happened at all. When I was released from my case, my legs gave out from under me that I had something to the ground. I was able to lift a finger until Rena was out of sight. Who was that? I felt cold. My body was drenched in sweat. I was finally able to form a coherent thought and ask myself once again, who was that person? Who looked like me and you do? Ooh, wow, well, son. My TV turned off. Oh, shit, man. I need to turn that back on so I can watch some Vampire Diaries. Man, after I'm done opening this, man, it's a good show. You guys haven't watched your Vampire Diaries. Um, it's on Netflix, like the first six seasons, and Hulu Plus has the yeah, seventh season, I believe. I was out of it and couldn't bring myself to do anything until dinner except stare blankly into space. Was I terrified for Rena going off on me? No, that's not right. That was someone else who looked, only looked like Rena. Then who was, then who could have been? It was a dreadful feeling. Knowing that it was someone else, not Rena, so I might tip my shirt and have a problem talking to Rena like I usually do. That was that was strangely comforting. I could clearly that I should just calm down and clear my head. Those thoughts were scratching swirling around my mind. Finally, I returned to my senses and I heard my mother calling out to me from the bottom of the steps. Geechee! As I called from the bookstore. Bookstore? Can't think of why they'd be calling me. I went downstairs to pick up the receiver anyway. My apologies for calling so late at night. It's me, Oishi of the Okini. Okini. Okini me, uh, bookshop. Oishi san? Oh, it's Oishi san. Sorry, since your partner has picked up, I said I was from the bookstore. Oh, pants. It puts people off when I say I'm a police officer. Oishi san was in his own way rather cur courteous. It was so I didn't want my parents to hear me talk to the police. I brought their cordless phone with me as I dashed back up my room on the second floor. Sorry for calling so late. That phone number on the piece of paper I gave you yesterday was the old number. My apologies. Can you copy down the number I'm about to give you? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. He gave me the phone number first. There were as I wrote it down. I'm glad they didn't put in a real phone number because, you know, gangs put phone numbers and stuff. And if it ends up being a real number, people call and bug people. And, uh, unless, you know, that number is like the, uh, something to do with the company who made it, like the business line or something, whatever. Um, I thought that was the end of it, but he began making point of small talk and it was pretty hard to hang up. So I was a bit my bearer, son. The NSA search happened recently. I see. This is what the real person. He really beat around the bush there. His adult conversation skills with me slack jawed. Are you from around here, Oishi son? Yeah, I am. Born and raised in Okin Okinamiya. If he's from around here, he might know. I'm Oishi son. Do you know what this Okini Kukushi thing is about? Um, I believe this is when somebody, somebody vanishes because it was abducted by a demon. It's a special saying from around here. It has a meaning in a spirited way like everyone else says. Where my friends would say they didn't know. And I asked this older man to give me a direct answer. It made me a bit happy that he answered me directly without trying to hide anything. He named myself was not... Was, I'm not sure if I should tell you this, my bear son. Don't try to play this off. I'm not going to talk then. I'm not gonna, uh, hold on, guys. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, don't try to play yourself. You're not going to talk then. I'm not going to tell you anything. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I meant. It's just, it may make you feel bad. You see, long ago, he never saw what spirit as a village where demons reside. Demons? What demons you mean? Those pitchforking carrying things in hell? They're more like human eating monsters. They go down the village, sashing people up and gobbling them down on that kind of tail. Demon sashing the people is what this Okinikushi really means. They said that the curse and being demon happen away happened together. What does that mean? I already knew about the mysterious deaths happening five years in a row, but I didn't know there was people disappearing for the same five years. 
the curse and being demon the way happened together. First time I heard about that, is that it? Is that how it is, my bear son? Is that what I? That's what I want to know. I heard Raina and Mian talking of this. Said that is if it was really or is Joe Sama's curse and both then the curse and demon the way would happen. Or is she suddenly again hemming and hawing on the other end of the receiver? Maybe it's about that game to mind, my bear son. Do you know the first incident? The one about dismemberment? Yeah. The one of the six portraits is still on the run, right? Hypothetically. What if he was on the run but was demoned away? Hmm. Wow. Huh? It was an outrageous hypothesis from Oishi son. The incident four years ago was the particularly ghastly one. The police already knew the perpetrators, so they posted tons of wanted posters with the face on them. They stopped, staked out every very still kitchen and investigated every possible escape route he had. But after four years, there wasn't even a hint of where he might be, unless the police were completely incompetent. Even though it was an outrageous hypothesis, I couldn't simply laugh it off. Then what about the incident next year, when the man who supported the project and his wife both died in an accident? Well, actually, it was only the husband who died in an accident. His wife's body would never surface unless we found the body that is considered a missing person by law. At the time of the incident at the river below the cliff in Muddy Rapids, the police divers had searched every branch of the mainstream of the river for a dozen of miles, but in the end they weren't able to find her body. But that's just them not being able to find the body. She's still dead, right? Isn't it different from being her demon the way? We cannot say someone is still without their body. Until a certain number of years passed by law, she's treated as still alive. I'm not sure if it was right to call that being demon the way. The wife is missing. At least that part was reality. How about the third year? That she knows Bruce died of the illness and his wife committed suicide? Embarrassed son. That's actually the exact same scenario. The wife had supposedly thrown herself into the bottomless marsh deep in the forest around Hinomasawa. I mean, it's all circumstantially evidence. They simply found her suicide now in front of the marsh. A, div- a diver was able to recover a few remnants, but they weren't able to find a body. The investigation headquarters believed that she had faked her death and so she was and still was alive somewhere. I'm not sure if we could call those cases being demoned that way. It's just as you said, every year one person does, does go missing. The incident this year with the woman with Tom Tekerson has gone missing. Then what about the incident with the housewife beaten to death? We went missing. I believe the perpetrator was caught, right? Yeah, we arrested him. He was just a miscreant with a record of narcotic abuse. He made the crime while being questioned about a different incident. But well, you see, after he was arrested, a child from the victim's home went missing. It was still under investigation as to whether there's a parent that anything to do with the crime. But you said you caught him, right? Did he have an accomplice? No idea. It's considered a separate case. Moreover, we can't even check now because while well, under investigation, that man, he died in his holding cell. He sold a spork and choked to death and not know whether it was an accident or suicide. I mean, for the last five years, it was always one person who died and one who goes missing. That's about right, and that'd be two people who died because he murdered her, and that's, you know, he got cursed and died because he murdered somebody, so still, whatever. That's about right, no, actually, I'm surprised as well. I never realized that they had in common. I couldn't believe that this could have helped lead to the closing of those incidents. It was just something they had in common. It could it be that the demon away has something in common? Oh, she said, I'm as he seemed to be thinking about it. So I'm summarizing the events. The first year was the dam employee. Second year was the wife of a dam project supporter. Third year was the wife of the Shinto priest. Fourth year was the victim's family's child. And fifth year was the victim's girlfriend. I guess it doesn't seem like there's anything that connects them. With the exception of the first year wives and girlfriends, those do stand out. It does seem like there are a lot. This doesn't mean the fourth year's victim child was different. They could have really stood up if they were all married couples, except it's just not married couples, but parents' children as well. Maybe it's just somebody close to the victim or something. Come think of it. I believe Tom the son also told me the younger brother is alive and also moved, if I recall correctly. That child went missing in the fourth year. Who were they? Apparently he was quite mature. One year older than you. His name was Satoshi Hojo's son. Oh, like the game, dude. Huh, Satoshi? I remember that name. Didn't they tell me Satoshi transferred out last year? He was at your school until last year. They tell you anything about him? Come to think of it, when I transferred in, I believe they said my seat belonged to a recent transfer student. You know, where I sat once belonged to the one who was deeming the way. It was his seat. I recall this closest sensation that came from the desk. It made my hair stand on end. The stricken mysterious death. Why was she with someone's curse? I knew it, how it connected to me. That chilling sensation. It was a feeling that we were sure someone was cursing in the back of my neck. We were sure someone was cursed, huh? 
Holy who, who shit, some of Chris really exist. And all honesty, I was beginning to believe it. And I was scared. That's why I wanted to say it was a plot crafted by a man and not the work of a curse. But the more I dug into it, the less likely that seemed. You know, the more I dug up, the more mysterious it became. So I kept digging, eventually, I reached the point where I learned something that I really shouldn't know. Here there be none the wiser or seek an answer I may regret. Which one would I be happier with? Maybe it'll be next time. Me next time. My execution could only be delayed for one year. You need to just move, dude. That's when I remembered. I mean, uh, and I said she moved the next victim of the curse. You mean Rina Ryugu-san? She's just around last year. She's her classmate, is not she? This incident really might be too bit disturbing for a girl. Not just scared is she. It was at that. She says she might be her next. She said in a way that made me think she had a concrete reason behind it. It felt like she was convinced, almost as if I mean, you could say she was frightened. Her son changed her demeanor. That's someone who looked like Rina. What was it, Rina? That might be unrelated. All the strange things I felt from Rina today came back to me. I see. Then I'll be doing a bit of investigating on this end. Please continue your effort, uh, observations. Are you a good son? I'm a bear son. Are you sure you're asking me to keep Rina under surveillance? That's not why I mean my bear son. I just want you to watch out for your friends so she doesn't end up the next victim. At that moment, just as my mouth was a gay because I was so impressed with this mature, clever way with words. Knock, knock. It sounded like a thrust in my heart racing. In an instant, I had a pointless code up and a pointless code up at the end of the receiver. He should get the door, please. On the other side of the door, I heard my father's ugly, upbeat voice. What could it be? It was so late. Sorry, my dad just came in. Can we leave it at this for tonight? Yeah. My apologies again for calling so late. If you find anything else, please let me know. I'll tell you if I make any progress on this end. Well, then, have a pleasant evening. Each of you hungry, open up on the door. Dad's got his hands full. What is Dad doing? I stayed in the same position while on the phone the whole time, so my joints were aching. Uh, when I went in the door, I saw my father was sitting there with this with the tray. I'm not trade cookies and two cups of black tea. Fairly fancy spread for our household. There was even sugar and lemon slices on the side. And then you could ask for. That was quite the show of hospitality. What's going on, Dad? What's all this for? Don't play around, Kuchi. I'm coming in. That was in high spirits and I spoke on his face. But for my entire life, I never seen him act this hospitable. Well, I got into him. So what were you talking about? I jumped. It's not something I had to keep my father. But how could I explain to him I was talking to a detective? I was assuming he was this late at night. Nothing much. Just a friend. I don't mean the phone. She was here, wasn't she? Rena and Sean. Oh, wait, oh, she wasn't here. Oh, come now, don't try to keep it from me. So she just came over to play. You two are chatting away, so I thought I'd bring some tea, but it looks like I just missed her. I knew what I was talking about, but a cold switch was on my back. How long were we were talking? Rena and Sean went upstairs about half after, so I guess it was an hour, I guess. You saw her come up to the second floor? Yeah, I did. I was also told that your room was down the hall stairs. I mean, I came to my house about an hour ago. Then I met her at the door and called out to me on the second floor. I probably didn't hear because I was so focused on my conversation with the son. I didn't reply, but I knew I was in my room, so you had her come in. Then told her my room was on the second floor. Then she think my dad went upstairs. They about an hour passed. She passed by my dad just as she was bringing up tea and left. She came upstairs by an hour passed. Then she passed my dad and returned home. Then until she came upstairs and until she left, where was Rena? There was only a short hallway between my room and the stairs, meaning Rena had for about an hour in the hall. And now she couldn't have been standing in front of my door all the time. The door to my room was particularly thick. You could easily hear everything that being said inside. All of that my mom was saying is all the nonsense I spoke to Rishi son about the rain rush through my head. Honey, you don't tease him. And more importantly, you need to clean up your studio. It's a mess again. You know, I'm yelled at the death from downstairs. Dad left the tray with me and went downstairs with a disappointed short old. Followed my dad out of the room, which my eyes looked down at the floor around the doorway where Rena might have stood all that time. Just now, I was looking at Rishi's with my back turned. Rena was standing at me six feet away the whole time. All that time in the dimly lit doorway. What did she see? What did she hear? For what reason? A scene from my two tea cups ominously waved rather than twisted around my black tea filled my room. 
Whoa, dude. She's crazy now. Oh, shit. What is going on, man? I mean, they're not giving, this is getting really good. 35 minutes in. Um, okay, guys. Um, I'm in the video here. Um, this was actually a pretty good chapter. And I will see you guys tomorrow.